Hello, everyone. And according to Agatha Harkness, I am a loser because I go to bed early. Yes, <laughs> it's me, Derek. <laughs> Join with the night owl himself, Noah, and you're listening to A Bite Of. Oh, we're all bonerific over here. Totally bonered. <laughs> Every boner is a blessing. Oh. <laughs> you didn't have to add more, but I'm glad you did. I feel like that is another t-shirt at a boner family reunion. What? Every boner is a blessing. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah. A baby shower. That's beautiful. Oh my God. This Aww. is gold. A christening. First. Every boner is a blessing. First two minutes into this pod. You're welcome, Marvel. <laughs> we're just talking. We're just talking about a character. <laughs> And that's it. <laughs> well, so, I mean, if you didn't recognize it by the title and or us talking about boners, not that kind of boner. Agatha, all along, episode six. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, this is the point in the shows when we're covering these longer ones where I'm like, what episode are we on? We've been in this world for so long and I cannot believe we only have two weeks left. Two weeks. I mean, this week. One Comic -Con, that's right. Yeah, Comic-Con oh. happened, and the final two episodes are together in one week, so next week, Agatha ends. Oh, man. Okay, we have a lot to talk about. We need to get right into it. Make sure you're following us. Make sure you're throwing stars our way. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you're on Spotify, you can see our pure pretty, 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 pretty faces. You can see them there. Um, Patreon, got a Discord with an Agatha all along coven spoiler chat, so if you want people to talk about, get in that Discord. And talk about Agatha all along freely without worrying about spoiling it for people. <laughs> yeah, which is a nice thing. Yeah, yeah. I think. Um, spoilers ahead. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, we, we just need to get into this episode because it might be a meaty one. I don't know. You never know how hefty or meaty these uh, episodes are going to be. I try to keep it clean and family friendly. Our show is called A Bite Of. I can make food puns all I want. Yes, but not when we started the episode talking about boners. That's your problem. I mean, so spoilers. Not for me. <laughs> spoilers ahead for WandaVision. Agatha all along, comic book lore. Um, just in general. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Come back. Okay, so let us officially take a bite of Agatha All Along, episode six, Familiar by Thy Side, written by Jason Rostovsky and directed by Ganja Montero. A tragic accident claims the life of William Kaplan at the same time Wanda releases Westview from the hex hold she had on the town. Unknowingly, Billy Maximoff's spirit enters the teen's lifeless body after being erased from Wanda's reality. Trying to figure out how it happened, Billy's research leads him to Agatha. Of course, because it was her all along. <laughs> we haven't heard that song once. I don't know if we should. You know, but it's the name of the show. I know, but it's like, it's, it's WandaVision's thing, you know, like, keep it there. Keep it there. All I right. have some thoughts about this being WandaVision 2.0, but like, we'll get to it. So <laughs> what did you think of this episode? Ooh, um, I really, really liked it. Mm. I have, um, some criticisms, of course, like, this is what we do, right? I'm not going to start this episode like that, but I think, you know, you always have to have this type of episode in a show like this, in a mystery box show. You have that episode that is like, oh, let's go back a little bit before we can go forward. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And we knew that was coming. I wasn't sure if it was going to be with Agatha or if it was going to be with teen slash Billy. Um, I'm glad we got the Billy one. Right. I do feel like even though this was longer than the last episode, I felt like I needed a little more mm. because there's there's scenes which I thought they did really well with the time that they were given and used. Um, I just wanted to see maybe Billy deal with this imposter identity crisis a little bit, um, which sounds bad, right? Because it's like, why do we want him to, why do I want him to suffer a little bit more? But I just felt like I needed, I needed to sit with it a little more before it went to the quirkiness that is Agatha all along. Um, but that's, that's just me. But I think they did a really beautiful, poignant way of introducing this character or where their journey started. Mm -hmm. What about you? Yeah, I, I thought it was a good episode as well. I think it, like you said, it kind of met that thing of us going, we know we're going to be getting a backstory soon. And it was Billy slash William slash teen. How do we refer to them? Billy? Is it just Billy? Billiam. Billiam. Got it. That's perfect. <laughs> um, I liked that it answered some of the questions that we were wondering. 
of course, didn't give us all of the answers because it is only episode six out of nine. So I thought it was I thought it was really good. I did. And and I'm excited to see what this all means for the coming episodes. Yeah, I think this is so now that we've gotten some answers on like, why Billy? How did he get here? What happened? Um, now it's going to be, what does this mean? And how are they going to handle it going forward? Because I feel like for me personally, that's going to be like the make or break thing. Because it's like, okay, I'm seeing what's happening and how you guys are connecting this to WandaVision. It's great so far, but like what, where is this going to lead us? I know that we still have Vision Quest or whatever the Vision series is called. And then potentially a Scarlet Witch movie, potentially something with like Agatha and Billy. So like there's a lot of things that are circulating right now. We just know there is a Vision show coming out so or even the young avengers right right yeah i mean who knows who knows yeah i think it is really interesting kind of stepping back from this episode a little bit just looking at the broader mcu of like okay there's all these spinoffs and stuff from wandavision happening and there's like the young avengers but like after the next couple avengers movies like secret wars the the universe or movies are supposed to reset in a way so it's going to be interesting. Like they're going to have like the, how are we going to wrap this up? And what does that mean going forward? Like, is everything kind of soft rebooting? Right. It's like, is the family going to get back together? And it's like, okay, bye. So yeah, are we doing all of this work for nothing? Right. It's going to be, I don't think they're going to do that, but it is interesting of that's how they're talking about it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Side note. It's just gotten too complicated for them even. So they're just like, we're going to just start over. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, over 10 years, like what's that? Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah with with timelines and where does it leave any of us yeah i think we will do a whole episode on that probably at some point (laughs) i'm like where are we now charlie day (laughs) right yeah we actually need to make one of those boards i think that would be actually very helpful so big thing coming right out of the gate with this episode it starts with william i was gonna call him billy william's bat mitzvah Mm -hmm. um what did you think about this depiction of william before billy well i am releasing the reality that I'm supposed to believe that Joe Locke is playing a 13 year old. (laughs) He keeps playing kids and it's, it's fine. At least he went three years ahead. (laughs) Yeah. He's just getting younger and younger, but that's fine. So the interesting thing for me is, you know, I think I've been saying this now for four years of doing the podcast. I only know so much about the comics, uh, you know, the comic history of these characters So seeing that there's this other character that's lightly related to Billy Maximoff named William Kaplan, um, I think is really interesting. Um, And I think it's honestly really sad. It's, It's nice to see this young man being celebrated by his family. Obviously, he's loved. He has tons of friends. And then in the next, what, two scenes, we see something very tragic to happen and actually him lose his life. Right. So... It's an interesting introduction to a character who doesn't necessarily continue on. Or do they? I uh, think that's the question, right? Right. Right. Yeah. I I mean, are are you good? Okay. I didn't want to be like, anyway, (laughs) my opinion. Um, One, I love that it was called Magic Mitzvah. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, neither of us are Jewish. Um, I I really appreciate seeing these different types of um, traditions and everything being done. And I thought from an outsider's perspective of the little tiny bit that I know um, that they did a good job of Mm -hmm. portraying that Um, we get such little time with William. I mean, I think he has what, like maybe a couple lines of Joe Locke playing William, right? Um, In this little snippet, this little vignette of his life at the party and everything, he is very much loved. His parents love him. He's so proud of him. Like you said, um, and then we get Lilia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Surprise, Lilia met him prior to the road. So that is something that I thought was really interesting about this episode that no matter what we thought, everything we were theorizing, this episode kind of turned everything on its head a little bit because it was like, wait, he met all the witches prior to the road. There's little things everywhere that is like, what is happening here? Like, wait, let's like... I'm glad you're answering this, but now you're giving me more questions, right? Um, What did you think about Lilia showing up and doing the tarot reading or the palm reading, I should say? Well, I think it made sense, right? Because when we first in the first two, I guess it was the second episode 
when Agatha's putting her coven together, Lily is like, I've just been kind of doing little things that I can to survive. And I guess being a hired palm reader for events is one of those things. So what I keep thinking about in my head is, you know, when she reads William's palm, she says that his lifeline has two branches, basically. It's like split. It's split. And it kind of causes her to panic. So the question that I have is, what did she see that made her panic and want to put the sigil on him? Mm, yeah, the revelation that Lilia was the one that did the sigil, which, okay, in hindsight, we should have known. How long have we been doing this? We should have noticed from the tarot cards stuff, the marketing that they showed, that sigil was all over him. It was Lilia all along. <laughs> right. I even had, um, I, I was obviously doing some research and reading some theories and things. And that, that when she was writing the names of the coven on the piece of paper, the black heart actually wasn't Rio. It was Billy, but she couldn't write his name. Well, I, that was also confirmed with Eddie. He texted, you are my black, black heart. heart. I was like, oh, you guys, we thought it was Rio. But if we're going with the theory of Rio being death, it wouldn't make sense that she would be part of the coven. Right. It was teen the whole time. It was teen all along. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do, we can't keep doing that for everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I thought that was interesting. I'm not too sure what she saw. We're not 100% sure. I'm, I'm thinking this week when this episode comes out, um, we're going to get Lilia's trial. And maybe we'll find out a little bit more about how her powers work, her backstory a little bit. Um, but it does seem like she saw something that either she's trying to prevent something or encourage something, put him on a certain path. I'm not sure. Like, did she see the events of Multiverse of Madness? Did mm. she see that Agatha is going to need a coven, but it's important that nobody knows who Billy is? Right. We definitely know that she saw him get into an accident and that's why the lifeline is split because she tells him, I believe right before he leaves, like, enjoy every moment. Like you just enjoy this moment, right which now. is so sad because she knew and she couldn't tell him. Yeah. Um, but I did think it was a nice detail of her making that sigil, dropping it as soon as she dropped it in that coat pocket. What am I doing? Yeah, that was very cool. <laughs> yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. I was, again, kind of going back to why the sigil why did she want to block his name from herself, from everyone else? And was it something along the lines of maybe she was hoping that by putting that sigil there, he wouldn't realize who he was so he could just live his life happily? I, I, that's interesting, right? I, I, I know that there was a part where teen, I keep wanting to call him teen. We've called him teen for so long, even though we knew. I mean, we might be better off just calling him teen. Billy, you all know who we're talking about. <laughs> um, but when he was on the computer or something, you see post-it notes of sigils. Like there's two different types of sigils. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure how it works. And I think it's one of those things of like, this is a thing that happened, but we're not going to over explain it because then that sets rules on things mm -hmm. and we can't change them later on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm not too sure why she would have done it. I don't have any theories yet. Yeah. <laughs> the scene is so layered because we have Lilia meeting William, mm. but then seeing Billy, right? We literally see Billy in her crystal ball. But then she has one of her like wild premonitions where she just says a tarot card out of nowhere, which is from probably her trial, like in the future. Everything she has said so far has like come to fruition in some point, except for like when she, like she called Jen high priestess. I think she said like nine of, knights or swords or something like yeah. that so it's like those i'm not too sure but yeah she said what did she say in this one she said tower reversed oh. and so i do love an oracle deck and tarot cards so i do have a tarot deck this is the star spinner tarot by trungles and Ooh, so this is like an analog research this is your librarian coming out books <laughs> so this is actually really interesting so the tower both upright and reverse i could see relating to teen mm. but i'll talk about reverse so it says the walls you have built remain strong but you never leave them in an effort to hide from the wind and cold you have also shut away the sun and stars you resist change because it may entail starting over to your mind a fresh start is more of a threat than a new opportunity that's reversed that's reversed interesting yeah so that sounds like an internal right that's like an internal change is that what 
it sounds like it's very, you're afraid to change. And so you've built these walls around you because it feels safe. But by doing that, you're stopping yourself from experiencing the good things in life. Well, that's interesting then, right? Because what is... If we're going off of the promotional materials that they showed with the tarot cards, and it's interesting that Lily has pretty much said all of the ones that have been in the promotional materials, the one with the tower, it shows the crown of Billy at the top being struck by lightning and it's falling and then two other people falling as well. So I'm really curious to see like what his resistance to change is. And is he actively resisting some type of change? Because it seems like in this episode... He wants to understand. Think of this. <laughs> Think of this. This actually sounds more like Wanda. Mm, okay. Keeping herself trapped in the hex because it feels safe mm. and not letting change actually happen when it's supposed to. That is interesting. I mean, he is a part of her. Yeah. I have, I'm going to save this towards, we'll, we'll have like a theory section. Theories. A little later after we get through some of this, because I don't want to like go all ridiculous mode right now. Um, but I think it still might pertain to him, mm. you know, <laughs> and Maximoff dramatic ways that they do. Well, it. they are very much alike. And yeah. I guess it tells them that you're very much like your mother. Um, I do want, before we leave Lilia, um, and this, uh, bar mitzvah, I do want to say that is she now the reason that multiverse of madness happened? Wanda could not find Billy, her children. I mean, Toby, Tommy is out there somewhere. Um, but Billy was right there. He took the body of somebody nearby. Wanda couldn't feel him or see him or anything like that. So I think Lillian might be the reason Multiverse of Madness happens, which essentially just means that that's why Wanda died or disappeared. All she did was write on a little block. That's all it took. What a mess. <laughs> Some would say it's madness. I need to know why she did it. Yeah. Lilia, call us. We will find out. I mean, her episode, I think, is this week. Mm -hmm. So I hope we do find out. We better. The question is, though, staying on the sigil for like a second, is when, since the sigil is now broken, when Lilia sees Billy, is she going to recognize him? Because leading up to this, Jen didn't see Billy. He just watched her on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But Alice saw him, and so did Lilia, and so did Sharon. Um, which I don't think Sharon would have really remembered, but she did. It was like that same night. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if they do recognize him. And if that is, if Alice comes back, because Alice so far, we don't know where she's at. Well, and if Lilia and Jen are the only two going through Lilia's trial, Lilia may not survive the trial. So we may never get the answer to that question. <laughs> Spoiler, they're not. Did you see in the trailer? It shows, no. it shows Joe Locke and Agatha there with them. Oh, well, that's good. Because that's when Joe Locke is in the Maleficent costume. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. And Jen is the Wicked Witch. It's so good. The gang's back <laughs> together. It's not a spoiler. It's in the trailer. I'm sorry if you guys didn't we know We already that. said spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> we said spoiler alert. All right. So let's go to the car accident. Mm. Um, again, I think they did a really good job mm-hmm. of portraying something like this. That scene in general, like finding out one, what the kind of world or neighboring places thought the hex was. It was an Avengers training exercise gone wrong. It's an anomaly. They it's get, whatever the government tells you it is. Right. Or sword. Mm. Um, ooh. Do you think, sorry, side note, I feel like I got a Lilia premonition. Um, do you think that Monica was protecting Wanda in some way? By like, I don't know, because it would be weird of like, who said that it was an Avengers exercise? Like, who is trying to cover that up for oh, Wanda? That's true. Aside from the person that runs sword now. With, mm. Hmm. Interesting. Um, anyway, side note. <laughs> um, so the car accident. Um, I. Let's get into one of my things that I feel like is I'm not too sure how to feel about it. And I'm open to hearing what others. Again, we're not Jewish, right? Um, William is a Jewish boy, grew up Jewish, obviously just had a bar mitzvah. He passes away. Hmm. Then Billy takes the empty vessel. So did they keep that part of the character or is right now it not? You know what I mean? So like, I know that there has been some like discourse online and stuff about like erasing, you know, some of Wanda's um, heritage and then also the Jewish nature of Wiccan, the creator of Wiccan. Is a gay Jewish man. Yeah. So it's like, mm-hmm. it's very important to the character. So 
I think what this team had to do was simplify a very complex and crazy origin in the comics. And it feels interesting to me because then kill that character. Yeah. Because there is something in the comics, right? Where Billy is William Kaplan, but it's not through death. Well, yes. So, yes. So it's not like this. It's Mm -hmm. not like um, taking over the body of somebody else. Mm -hmm. Long story short, and this is the easiest possible way. I've said it a little bit before. I'll say it this time. Their souls, Tommy and Billy, actually were part of Mephisto, blah, blah, blah. Agatha makes Wanda forget about the kids. They're actually there. Anything. They get released from Mephisto because those parts of the soul shards, whatever, fought back. They get reincarnated into new people, but they are them. They are born as them. But separate families. Mm -hmm. So they don't even like get in the same family, separate families. Mm. Billy Kaplan is raised as Billy Kaplan, a Jewish kid, Jewish family, because that's where he was born, right? Um, Tommy raised by a different family, everything. And then it's not until later when they all kind of converge and it's like, oh, we're related. I'm not really a Kaplan. I am. But I'm not. I'm also Wanda's son. Mm. Um, So in this, it's not that way. Because as far as we know, there are some lines that I do think is interesting. Um, But William is dead. And Billy took over the place of the body. Again, I'm going to be interested to see how it ends, right? Because if there is a line, I believe, that um, I can't remember when Billy says it in the episode. But he says something of like, oh, I think he's talking to Eddie. And Eddie's like, well, who are you? And he's like, I'm like Billy or mostly like he says something like that where he's like, I'm mostly Billy or like, I'm not just Billy. So I'm curious if is William still there somewhere or is he completely gone? I know we do hear the heartbeat and it stops and then it starts again when Billy is there and he yells Tommy. So it's like, I feel like on the surface, it's like William is dead and Billy's there. But then what does that mean? I would love to hear it from someone who is Jewish and hear what their perspective is for sure. Right. Yeah. So back to the car accident. Mm. (laughs) Um, It was devastating. I think that like I didn't expect it to be as violent as it was. Um, And especially just hearing Rebecca being like, I can't get to him. I was just like, geez, like this is. Oh, God, like this got dark because it was all like happy and heart stoppery with all the neon and Mm -hmm. everything. And then it was like, ooh, and we're back in Agatha all along. Yeah. Yeah, I, I appreciate the detail of us, you know, when, when you're, when you're seeing teen, right, he has that piece of his eyebrow that's gone and it's always thinking like, oh, it's just a cool teen thing to do to shave your eyebrow, but that's actually where he hit his head on the piece of the door that killed him. So, um, I, I, I appreciated that detail and us seeing that connection there Mm -hmm. between his depiction, but yeah, it's really it's incredibly devastating in the fact that they think they have their son back, but in reality, he's not in there anymore. That is, I think, the most devastating and heartbreaking thing about this episode, because yeah. even after he's recovering and goes back home and, you know, we get to see a little bit more of how his powers work because we saw it in WandaVision of him being able to hear people. Um, and in this, it seems from what he said, people that he's close to and it seems like high emotion is when he really can hear it. Um, but just like. Him hearing how it's affecting these strangers who are supposed to be his parents, but aren't his parents and him just wanting to kind of placate to them. And when he goes into the, when he goes in front of the mirror and he's like, I am William Kaplan, I'm William Kaplan, William Kaplan. That is devastating Mm. because his last memory, or at least when he woke up was when they disappeared in the finale of WandaVision. And it's like, so what? What is he supposed to think? Right? Yeah. He's like the body of a 10-year-old going into a 13-year-old and then having to age. <laughs> but it's it's also interesting to think about Billy as a character in knowing that it's almost like he can't blow his cover because he needs to survive. Mm. Right? Instead of being like, I'm not William, you know? But also, like, what does he know? You know, what it, it's, like how, it's like, what am I even supposed to do, even if I don't want to believe it? Yeah. It's a child. Well, he knows Tommy is his brother, but he doesn't necessarily know that Wanda is his mom. Well, that's what's interesting. I don't, he doesn't know any of that. So he I just think, knows that he's calling out for Tommy. Right. But I think he, he kind of always had that in his head. And it wasn't until he spoke to a particular character at Skate Westview later on, where when he hears that there was twins, Billy and Tommy, he's like, my brother. Oh, Wanda. Oh, Vision. So I don't think he like 
puts the pieces together until they're laid out in front of him. Um, it is interesting. I'm curious if being going into that body caused the amnesia or was it the sigil or was it just the act of disappearing and then reappearing in a body? It is interesting to know that like he doesn't have any memories of William or Westview. Everything started in that car crash. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how amnesia works. Yeah. If it isn't even is amnesia, it's just, I don't even know. He was once one thing and now he's just another. Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond amnesia. Yeah. <laughs> it's life erasure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Flash forward to three years later, we have our delightful Billiam in love with Eddie. Boyf is real, which I think is very exciting for us. And of course, the depiction of young gay teen love is delightful. It's always nice to see, especially in a Marvel property. I feel like. We don't get it much. We yeah. get little tiny snippets. So it's good to see Joe Locke coming over to Marvel and being like, nope, I'm going to gay this up. I'm going to yeah. gay it up a little bit. I'm going to make a joke about not going in the closet again. And it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. And I love the thought that his parents love Eddie. Eddie is a part of their life. Obviously, they didn't have a problem with him coming out. And that was like another thought that I had was like, was William gay? Oh, maybe. You know what I mean? Or was he not gay, but because Billy was gay, he, you know what I mean? It was just like... He was still pretty young, so, I don't know, 13, maybe, or maybe not. Well, you know, it, it's not a question. My question is not whether or not he's out of the closet. It was whether he was gay oh, right. or not, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? But I, it, it is nice to see that the parents um, really do are accepting of that, even mm -hmm. making his favorite roast and air fryer potatoes. <laughs> or yeah. Air, yeah, I think it was air fried potatoes or something like that, like fried potatoes. Um, it's really nice to see. The Kaplans deserve the world. They are delightful. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yet their somewhat son is off gallivanting with witches. I was, part of me was just like, oh, Eddie is close to Teddy. Teddy is the Hulkling and Wiccan's counterpart. I was like, I don't think they're not going to do that. There's no way that they would be like his name went from Eddie to Teddy. Mm. I feel like it's just similar for whatever reason. They're just playing with us again. Mm -hmm. They're doing that. One of the things that I like so much about Eddie, though, is that he's willing to accept everything about Billy. Oh, yeah. Right? Billy's like, oh, it's a sigil. Um, I'm discovering things about myself. I'm doing research. And Eddie's like, okay, yeah, I'm going along with all of it. Yeah, he even will meet a complete stranger in a dark parking garage instead of meeting anywhere else. <laughs> but going with him to meet a stranger online, literally the opposite of what everybody has told anybody to do. Right. He's like, sure, I'll go with you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's fine. They'll be okay. And of course, that introduces once again, the man of the hour, the mystery, the legend, Mr. Boner himself. I can't believe they were like, mm, you're going to get boned twice. <laughs> you're going to get boned twice. Um, having Evan Peters come back is insane. I actually have more respect for the people doing this show and I have more confidence in them. The fact that they brought this character back. Because this character, we've said it, I've said it, I said it when we were starting this again, of that was the biggest misstep in WandaVision was the Ralph Boner character. And the fact that they brought him back and they were like, no, 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 the story's not over. That was the worst thing. We heard you, but we're going to bring it into this. And so the fact that they had that confidence, I'm like. I see you guys. I did love the detail of in WandaVision, we saw that he was an actor. We saw his headshot. And in this, he's still an actor. He's just been driven, you know, mad b because of his Wanda uh, experience. He has a one-man show in Paramus. Uh, hello, he needs to fill the seats. Yeah. Someone's got to come. It's really sad. He's if... off, 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 broad, off Broadway. Another state. Yeah. <laughs> Over. <laughs> um, I, I actually really like this character more not it's sad thinking that like he's gone down the spiraling path and he's like super paranoid and has like chicken bone crosses on his bucket hats now um but if we're still going off of like those horror movie tropes that they've been sprinkling through this or those fantasy witch tropes he is that guy in the horror movies that has that lore or that backstory you need to go forward or get that revelation um, he is that person. A hundred percent. Always a crazy person like that. Or I shouldn't say crazy, paranoid and like manic person. Um, so it was just really funny to see Boner be that character and also pepper in all these jokes. So much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, other than the humor and just having uh Evan Peters back, 
it's to release the name of Agatha Harkness mm. onto Billy. And also he killed Sparky. That's true. He poisoned a dog. He didn't want to. No. He didn't want to. And his physical media collection was left behind, which we can see when Agatha puts him in the closet. Bunch of Blu-rays right there. Blu-rays. The fact that Agatha is only wearing his clothes is crazy. (laughs) Yes, that is true. (laughs) Through this entire thing. That is true. She is still, she just took over his house, drove down the market value, and is wearing his clothes. (laughs) I live here now. This is where I live. Oh, poor Ralph. (laughs) How did he even start over? I mean, that's the story they need to tell. How did huh. Ralph pick himself up by the bootstraps I don't and think, start over? Did he pick himself up, though? I feel like he's still crawling. Well, he's wearing clothes, he so is. that's good. He is. He doesn't have the puka shell necklace on anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we can celebrate that. So, so post-bonering, mm-hmm. um, it's the search for Agatha. I thought th- this episode did a really good job. The, the beginning half was obviously very compelling and beautifully done. The second half is like... It's a lot because it, it time skips a little bit. And I feel like they needed to do that. The, there's this thing that shows could fall into of like over explaining something that we kind of know mm. already. And I'm glad that they they jumped it a little bit. It was like, OK, I'm going to go research Agatha Harkness. Here's all of these things that I found clicking random links on the Internet. Like that's that's risky. That's a virus <laughs> waiting to happen. But I <laughs> can we talk about just the internet searchingness of it because we got some revelations about Agatha. The lore. The lore of Agatha. And like her also being like stalked online or people keeping tabs of them is pretty realistic. I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> There's always those sections of internet where it's just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I liked uh, Brewhapedia, which uh. is where he found one of the main things. But let's see. Agatha, of course, survived the Salem Witch Trials, which was like, duh. Caused the Hindenburg disaster. I also saw maybe the Titanic mm-hmm. she caused as well. Um, and is Jolene. Is Jolene. Yeah. I, w- I want to just list the fun facts about Agatha mm-hmm. that were on the website. Uh, murdered her entire coven. Possesses succubus powers. Nickname is Witch Killer! Exclamation point. Um, only known survivor of the Witch's Road. Those are great fun facts. Yeah. I, yeah. No notes. <laughs> I don't question any of those. I think they're all very accurate. So not to bring up a certain, um, you know, green witch, <laughs> Rio, with all of those, because I know in this episode, they, she like does her body count and stuff like that. I am actually curious is I don't know if she caused those things or she was dating death. And she just went along for the mm. ride as Rio was claiming those souls. Because in the epi- in Alice's trial, she talked about claiming souls or claiming what's hers. And so it seems like that's kind of her MO. Um, so I don't know. I'm that's just, a very good point. I don't know if Agatha actually did it because she doesn't seem like the type of person that's going to be like, you know what, I'm going to kill this whole boat full of people. You know, she would only be there because it was a mass, um, you know, event. <laughs> She's just hanging out. Yeah. Basically. Rio's like, you want to go see this? And she's like, sure. Yeah. It's like when you're newly dating someone when you're younger and they're like, oh, do you want to come hang out while I work? That's what they sure. were doing. Yeah. Exactly. You know, you just like sit in the store while they're actually working. She's just going through the centuries, going to every horrible incident. Yeah. She's got nothing better to do <laughs> yeah. than watch her girlfriend murder yeah. people. <laughs> in this, when he finally goes and uh, sees Agatha, right? I liked the alternate view of the first episode because when we got the boner family reunion pitch a tent fantastic mm-hmm. marvel needs to make that a t-shirt like i don't want these like etsy versions of them i want marvel themselves to make that a t-shirt yes. um but just seeing how like it wasn't rolling rock that she gave to rio it was just two mugs <laughs> like rio was never there as far as what we could see right everything took place in the house it's so silly yes i mean i think we talked about this in the first episode when we realized you know, when there is that reveal that when she's like trying to show him the pictures of the body, but it's really just the flowers that like these neighbors are just be like, oh, my God, Agatha's in the front yard. She's taking pictures. She's like, just leave her. Just let her. Just let her do her thing. She'll, She'll go, go away. away. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just like Agatha has been she's just been living in this like alternate reality than oh, everybody yeah. else. I love that her accent kept going in and out. I love the poking the bear bit, the pen bit. It's just so funny. I mean, it's Catherine Hahn doing what she does. Best. Yes. The fact that she thinks she has a gun in a holster, but it's like, I think like a 
something like a cock gun or something, or maybe like a hose. I or think something. it's a hose. Like, oh my gosh, what are those called? Hose sprayers? What? Nozzle? A hose head? What are those called? Hosiers? I don't think I've ever really realized a sprayer. A sprayer? I don't know. Hose spray? Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't sound right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it. <laughs> They did funny things. They is did what we're funny getting. Things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really clever. And I love seeing online people actually playing the two scenes side by side, Agatha's uh, view and then his view. And it just, I, I love stuff like that because the planning in that just always makes me so happy to see it because mm -hmm. it was just executed really well. Oh, it was really good. And I, I love that there was a moment, I think it's the poking the bear bit where you can see billy or joe Locke, one of the two laughing a little bit like mm -hmm. he just has this smile and he's just like oh okay i'm gonna play along with this um okay so let's move on from this i want to go to theory corner theory section theory time um before we get to the very last bit of this something that i feel like we have i have been dancing around a little bit mm -hmm. without really outright theorizing it because i felt like Maybe it was familiar territory, whatever. Are we on the witch's road? Are we somewhere else? What do you think about the idea of this being the road or not? Is this just Billy all along? Like, do you think this is just another hex situation, but it's Billy? I think it's definitely plausible, right? Because when we look at William slash Billy's bedroom, and we see all the movies that are on the posters around his room, you could easily see how with each of the trials, he has pulled something from each of those things that he loves so much. You know, one of the things that we both noticed, even in William's room when he first goes up there, is that there's a Wizard of Oz poster, figures, and also the book collection on his desk. And so The Witch's Road could very easily just be his depiction of the yellow brick road in Oz. The ones, the posters and stuff that I found in the room that I could see, the, the Black Cauldron, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, The Wizard of Oz, Goofballs, which is the Goonies. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they had to change that one name. Um, Alice in Wonderland, Moon Phases on the Chair, Houdini posters, Evanescence. <laughs> the Craft. <laughs> the Craft. Um, those were the ones that I saw, but it's very much like We've gotten hints and little things of this in each of the trials. And even looking back at the trials, all of them have been solved. I think I may have said this in the last one or maybe the one before that, but like they all have been solved by him. Like he is the key component to solve them. And the first one, his blood was needed to solve it. Um, the oh, him being injured in Alice's was the reason for it to continue and to get off the road and to continue that way. What was the last one? What was the last trial? Oh, Agatha's. Mm -hmm. When he wasn't supposed to touch the board by himself, but he did, said Nicholas Scratch, the door opened. Right. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Also, why would that have been Agatha's trial? Right. The 80s? That seems like somebody that is a consumer, Billy, <laughs> that is doing it. Yeah, it really, you know, all along we've been thinking that Agatha is the one leading this, but in reality, it's just Billy's trial. And so when we think of Agatha's, you know, being the only one to survive the witch's road, you know, whether it was her or with one other witch, does that bode well for this group of witches, this coven that's together in that Billy is ultimately going to be the sole survivor, but how many of them are going to perish because of it? Well, that, right. And it's like, are they even on the road? I know that there's the whole thing of like the road changes for the coven. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I feel like a seasoned witch also Rio's there. I feel like her introduction makes a little more sense of when she first came on the road of how she was checking things out. She, it wasn't like a, oh, this is the road. It was more of like, oh, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then there's that line with Agatha where she's like, I didn't think you had it in you. And then Billy was the next one to talk to her. And she's like, nothing. So it's almost like she kind of knew because I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. In the end of this episode, she says that you and your mom have a tell. And he's like, what's the tell? And he's like, I'm not going to tell you. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's almost like she kind of had a feeling like she said she kind of knew who he was. But the fact of like Sharon dying, she's like, I didn't think you had it in you was more of like, oh, like you're going to go to these lengths, right? Just like her, his mother went. So it's really interesting. I'm like, mm, I don't, is this another WandaVision situation? I know they went down, right? What did Sharon Davis said? 
She's part of the historical society. Oh, I thought the only thing down here would be the old public transit system. Mm -hmm. Are they just in the public transit system and Billy is manipulating it? That's an interesting thing. (laughs) Magic on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He can't even control it. He doesn't even know. I think if that theory is what we're doing right, and Agatha or Rio is there to claim the souls of all these people that should have perished, whatever. Why would Agatha go along with it if she wasn't 100% certain that this was or wasn't Billy? I don't, I'm not too sure if it's power. Right, that's what I was thinking. It's just the, ho- the hopes of her in some way getting her power back. Curiosity? She's got nothing else going on? Yeah, she's finally she free. Do. <laughs> I mean, and then, but what's to say that the Salem Seven really aren't uh, uh, like going after her? So she does need to escape in some way. That could also, that could be happening. And that's just a thing because, right, because the door didn't open until Billy went down there. So it wasn't until he was like in a heightened state that maybe his abilities worked in some way, just like what happened with Agatha when he pushed everybody away was when he was like really pissed off and angry. I'm curious if, I mean, it is annoying that his powers don't work right now, but it's like, okay. He has to be mad. <laughs> yeah, and I know it's very it's it's like you could really go down that road in particular of like when did he realize? How did he not know? Did he just realize now because the sigil was broken? Or you know, so it's that is confusing. Mm-hmm. That whole part of it. I think you know, there's something that happens in the end conversation with Agatha and Teen or Billy on the road, um, because it made sure to play that part of like. I want to, I'm after power. I want to go on the witch's road. You need to take me. Obviously he was like talking to what she would want to hear. And she mocks him in this episode, like power. That's all I wanted. It's like, what does Billy Maximoff want at the end of the road? And I do think it's important to remember that the road doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what you're missing. Mm -hmm. And is that Tommy or Toby, as Agatha said, is it just the knowledge of like his past life and also William is there an opportunity for William and Billy to be in the same vessel at the same time right what is exactly missing and I think that this show isn't going to have like another CGI battle like it did with Agatha and Wanda I think it's going to be about decisions I think it's like something is going to have to be decided one of the things that I'm a little worried about is you know, in looking at Agatha's past, for some reason she had to give up her son, right, to get the power that she wanted. I'm worried that if this is some sort of road, if if Billy is going to have to make a decision, and the one that we know that he truly loves right now is Eddie. So is he going to have to sacrifice Eddie in some way to get what he truly wants? So you're saying it's it's one of those like old, or I guess the the common thing in magic you have to give to get. Yeah. I'm just, yeah, I don't, I'm, it's okay. So if I think if it is a road, if it is the witch's road, it's going to be a little more nuanced, right? If it is Billy and he does have the same abilities as his mother, he could manifest, I guess, whatever he wanted. But then what does that mean, right? If this is Billy all along, what would possibly be at the end of his road, right? So yeah. th- I think that is, is, Mm, maybe that theory doesn't completely check out, right? Because if they get to the end of this road, I guess it's more of like, you just had to unlock yourself this whole time. And there is that scene of him and Agatha in that room and she has his, her hands on his head and it's like something intense is happening, but it's like, is this just so that way he can become a whole person? Which I think is nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> lovely. But do you think we'll see Tommy? That's and that was a question that I was wondering myself. And then again, this kind of gets into our early conversation of okay, so let's say he finds Tommy. What does that mean for this as a whole? Now yeah. they're reunited. Well, because he well, let's let's think back on what he wrote on that pad, right? It's like, um, I think he wrote like Wanda Maximoff, dead, dead, uh, vision dismantled. Yeah. <laughs> and then Billy Maximoff, Tommy missing so hmm, that is interesting i know again i don't know if this is spoilers or not for the vision show they are casting for a young teen but if they're gonna go off of like tom king's vision 
Vision does make a family just, and have kids. Right, exactly. So is that going to be Tommy or is it going to be Viv or somebody else? So it's, it's going to be interesting. I'm curious if we will see Tommy or get like a hint of like Tommy and then Agatha is going to be try to become a good person and mentor and help Tommy or Billy. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Who is it? Who yeah. will it be? <laughs> so I'm, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But I, w- how do you feel? One of the last questions I'll ask you. How do you feel if this is another kind of WandaVision 2.0 and this was Billy all along creating this hex? How would you feel about that? Because that's the theory that I'm sticking to right now. (laughs) I mean, I think it would be. I don't think it would necessarily be a letdown. I do think, though, that it would mean that he was a lot more powerful than we all thought. And I think that's kind of cool. I mean, that's the whole thing with the show is that you never really know what's going on. So I'm not holding true that it is actually the witch's road. I think that I'm along for the journey and whatever it ends up being, I'm going to be kind of like, okay, if they explain it well, I I I see where they were coming from. I do feel like if it is another WandaVision 2.0, it's not going to be like copy and paste, obviously. But I, I feel like the execution is going to mean a lot because after this one, it's like he saw all the witches beforehand all his room, you know, it's it's just like old little baby Wanda watching those shows. In Sokovia watching yeah. those shows. It's like, oh, that's why she chose those shows. So right. That was very much this moment. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Maybe it's a mix of both. Yeah. I, I don't know. Who knows? Um, oh, God. Three episodes left. Two weeks. A lot. A lot. All right. Well, Lilia's trial is next. I'm pretty sure. I'm curious if we're going to get a... An, a Rio Agatha backstory. I hope we do because I don't know when we're going to see these characters next. I just, I want more of them. <laughs> I know it, it is sort of sad to think about of like the, these coven members, if we ever will see them again, Ugh. they just need to make sure they flesh out the whole magical side of the MCU yeah. because I need all of them constantly. Yeah. That could just be its own separate phase. They could do like the strange Academy make it into a show but have like each one of these witches be a teacher there you go delightful great way to get new characters and see old yes ones. they've all they've all found a new home and it's together yay Lovely. I love that. well let us know your thoughts what you thought about it your theories on discord um abo nipples at gmail you can send an email in um yeah we have three episodes left guys we're in it it's gonna happen glind is coming <laughs> Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.